So it's the first day of June, and today felt like a great day to drop our Nintendo Direct predictions. But this isn't just gonna be predictions. We obviously have some leaks and rumors surrounding things in the Direct. So we're gonna kinda combine this all together. We're gonna create what we're considering to be a realistic list, and then we're gonna have a hype is real list. So we'll put timestamps down below to each list. Rumors and leaks will be spread throughout the stuff. So you have to watch the entire video if you wanna know all of it, but for the most part, we've covered all of this stuff in separate videos over the last couple of weeks. So a lot of that won't be new. That's why I'd rather throw it all in a list where I'm also gonna give predictions. Now, most of these predictions are gonna be for Nintendo published games. There will be a couple in there that aren't from Nintendo, but we already know that these games are happening, or at least can heavily, heavily bank on these games happening. Now, before I dive even further, I would like you guys to go down in the comments below and give me five games that you're predicting will be in the June Nintendo Direct. Because remember, we know the June Nintendo Direct is happening because Shintaro Furukawa already announced we're getting a Nintendo Switch dedicated Direct this month. Now, beyond all of that, we're on a road to 150,000 subscribers. And if you're really enjoying this, I would appreciate if you would go ahead and drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Also, we're gonna have a little bonus segment at the end where I might get a little bit emotional. Uh, it's just kind of a big love letter and thank you to all of you and Nintendo, but we'll get to that in a moment. First, let's jump into our realistic Nintendo Direct predictions. Now, when I say realistic, we obviously have some leaks and rumors out there, but what I really want to focus on are things that I think are reasonable to expect at this Direct. And the first one is something that just straight up is being stated to be in this Direct, and it comes from Midori, who put out on Twitter that Dragon Quest III 2D HD is not just coming, and by the way, we already know it's coming. We found out about something back in April behind the scenes that essentially confirmed it's coming. But here's the thing. She also said Dragon Quest III 2D HD would include Dragon Quest 1 and 2, and she directly said that this stuff will get new information in the upcoming Nintendo Direct. So that's just something I think is realistic at this point because Midori has a near 100% track record, and every single week, more and more of her uh, leaks, I suppose you want to call them, keep coming true. Now, beyond that, we need to dive into something Zelda. Now, I'm not going to be specific here because we know about leaked code names like Edward. We know about, you know, Midori saying, yeah, Twilight Princess. I don't know why Nintendo hasn't released it yet. So, yes, there are things floating out there for Zelda. But I just want to say something Zelda because Nintendo does tend to have something Zelda come out every single year. And at this point, we could get a remake from Grezzo for something, you know, like they did with Link's Awakening because I did that back in 2019. It could be about time to drop another one. We could see Twilight Princess or the Wind Waker HD or both. That's always possible. Those have been rumored to be done forever if you pay attention to the rumor mill. Or it could be something else entirely, a brand new top-down Zelda or who knows, a, a spin-off? Could be, could be something, a, a spin-off Zelda game, like a new Hyrule Warriors. There's a lot of possibilities here for something Zelda, but there typically is something Zelda every year, and that could really help bolster holiday sales a little bit if there's something Zelda that gets Zelda fans all excited after Tears of the Kingdom last year. And so obviously, since there's no DLC, that also could be another reason to bring out something Zelda because we don't have DLC filling that Zelda void. And I'm calling it a void because Nintendo does typically, over the last decade, give us something Zelda every single year. There's only been like one year they skipped. I don't think this is going to be a year they skip. I think this is part of the reason they're confident in selling 13 and a half million switches this fiscal year. Next, I think we're going to see a Kirby spinoff game. Now, this is just a realistic prediction. They could go with a normal Kirby side-scrolling game, but I kind of think we're going to see something like the buffet or the pinball style. You know, some sort of Kirby spinoff that isn't really like super exciting, but it's just thrown out there as, hey, enough people are probably going to play it, so why not toss it out there? They do this a lot with Kirby, and this isn't a crazy realistic prediction, but I do think the idea of a brand new full-scale Kirby game will probably be maybe cross-gen, but that could be on Switch 2, um, maybe something like Planet Robobot coming back, but I do think that that is a possibility. I also will note that if any mainline Kirby is coming, I think Planet Robobot makes a lot of sense because we do have leaks from PH Brazil who said that there would be a new 3DS 
remake slash remaster and a new GameCube remake slash remaster coming after April of 2025 for Switch. And while I know, guys, I know that they said that this Direct is focusing on Switch games in the second half of 2024, we all know Nintendo sometimes teases a couple of games for the following year. So I think the idea of Kirby Planet Robobot being that game would actually make a lot of sense. Now, another game that I think makes a lot of sense, but it is third party and is something that has been rumored is Hi-Fi Rush. If you guys are just assuming Hi-Fi Rush is going to be on Switch, I don't blame you. We got grounded, right? And and, and so we're probably going to get Hi-Fi Rush. It already came out on PlayStation 5. Well, it actually got listed by the ESRB at one point for Switch on April 30th. Now, obviously, it didn't come out on April 30th, and there's been no news on it since, outside of the fact that Tango, unfortunately, the developer is being shut down. But Hi-Fi Rush, I do still think, is coming to Nintendo Switch. I know at some point people thought it would be Switch 2, but I do think that that is realistic, and we should expect it, and again, was technically already leaked through an ESRB rating. So Hi-Fi Rush being in this direct second half of the year, I think it makes a lot of sense. Now, the last leak and stuff that I think is realistic to pay attention to is Midori also put out this leak of some sort of code name for a game called Banquet and that it's being made by ND Cube. Now, look, ND Cube basically makes Mario Party games. That's what they make a majority of the time is Mario Party. And look, Nintendo does like to pump out two to three Mario Party games every single generation. So they could be expecting to drop a Mario Party game in the second half of this year. And while the last one didn't sell as well, even though I think it's a better game than Super Mario Party, I do think that it's probably going to do some good numbers for them, sell anywhere from five to eight million between now and the end of the fiscal year. So I do think that could be a pretty solid seller for them, maybe even their best selling game uh, during this fiscal year. So I do think that that is realistic. Nintendo does like to pump them out. They don't need to wait for a new system to do it. And plus that would give them a little break to drop their first Mario Party on Switch 2 in like year two or three of the system. Because again, they're going to want to spread this stuff out anyways. They're not dropping everything they got in year one. That doesn't even make sense. So I, I think at this point that sort of ends my realistic expectations. We could talk about indies and other third parties, but I think that that is a solid lineup right there. Really fills out the second half of the year. Maybe a tease of one game for 2025. I think that that could go well. Now, one thing I did forget to bring up, and I guess I'll toss this on here at the end, is I do expect something Metroid Prime. It might not be Metroid Prime 4. It could just be 1 and 2 remaster, but that's maybe the last sort of thing that I'm kind of in the back of my mind going, you know what? They don't really have rumors this is happening beyond the fact that they're supposed to come, all three of those games. There are nothing specifically for this Direct, but I think something, whether it's 1, whether it's 2, could be a Shadow Drop, or whether it's Metroid Prime 4. Either way, I expect to see something Metroid in this Direct. That's part of my realistic predictions as well. Now we get into the hype is real section. And guys, forgive me here. The whole point of this section is to dream and dream big. But I'm actually dreaming big and dreaming realistic. I'm not going to be like, oh, we're getting the next brand new Zelda, the next brand new 3D Mario game and crazy things like that. No, it's still going to be in the realm of, well, let's just say possible, but very hype inducing. The first one is obvious, and this is something that I already technically mentioned, but never said this specific thing. So here we're getting into the specifics, not something Zelda, not something Metroid, not a Kirby spinoff. Metroid Prime 4. This is a hype is real direct. So having Metroid Prime 4 after being first announced in 2017 actually be here, whether it releases in 2024 or not, I don't know. But just having Metroid Prime 4 in this direct would be huge and would get me really, really, really excited. Uh, now, the next thing that I want to bring up is Kirby in the Forgotten Land 2. Look, it's about time for Kirby in the Forgotten Land 2 if you look at the development of the first game and you look at what's been happening with Kirby since. So it could make sense to drop a Kirby in the Forgotten Land 2 right now, especially if they're going to go with a different style of 3D Kirby in the future on Switch 2. Then why not follow up the best-selling Kirby of all time with a sequel at towards the end of the life cycle? I think that that could be a very hyped game for Kirby. Kirby fans especially, so that would be cool. Now, we also know Nintendo loves Mario sports games, and what's one Mario sports game we don't have yet? How about a Mario Sluggers for the second half of this year? That, again, would be pretty hype to me. I know the Mario sports games are sometimes a little bit of a letdown, but this is another one of those games that it's been so long since we played a Mario Sluggers that just having really, really good gameplay would be enough for me for now. I just want to see Mario Sluggers 
actually continue to exist rather than just kind of being the forgotten sports game from Nintendo. Now, this last one, this last one is maybe the most hype is real of all. And this would probably be a 2025 game, and I'll explain why. I'm talking about an Ocarina of Time remake being shown. And now, look, this could end up technically counting as the 3DS game next year because, well, again, there was Ocarina of Time 3D. That would be kind of a stretch, but hey, you could make that argument. Also, Nintendo and Lego recently announced the Great Deku Tree Lego set. And what's cool about that is you get to make the Great Deku Tree in one of two configurations. That actually makes me want to buy the set twice. You can make the configuration that has obviously Breath of the Wild slash Tears of the Kingdom Great Deku Tree or Ocarina of Time's Great Deku Tree. And what's interesting about the Ocarina of Time one is we haven't seen this game since the 3D version on 3DS a long time ago over a decade ago, kind of crazy. And beyond that, there's a lot of people today that never played Ocarina of Time. So that could be a pseudo teasing ahead of Ocarina of Time coming back. And when I'm saying the remake, we're not talking about HD in the 3DS version. No, remember, this is a hype is real segment. This is a from the ground remake. And to be fair, if we look at what Nintendo's done with all their 3D Zeldas, outside of bringing Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask in the HD, Every single 3D Zelda now exists in HD of some form. Skyward Sword recently being the one that came out at HD and 60 FPS. So I don't think just HDifying the 3DS versions of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask are the right way to go because those games are so old, they still won't look that great in just plain HD. I would like a from the ground up remake. Now we have multiple different rumors from like Game Over Jesse and so many others over the years. Too many to really summarize right here to give you the idea that an Ocarina of Time remake is coming. But the first real sign that we can even point to from Nintendo that this may exist is that great Deku tree you know, Lego set. That, that to me is something at least worth talking about and at least bringing to your attention. Now, we get to the end of this video and I wanna note that this is gonna be a little bit long and it's okay if you guys don't watch this segment. It's not really about predictions or anything and this probably won't be the last time I get emotional on this topic, but uh, there's a couple of things I just wanted to talk about with you guys. Uh, one of them is that this Nintendo Switch generation has been amazing. Uh, there's several reasons that Nintendo Switch is my favorite generation of Nintendo ever. And it's not just that a lot of my favorite IPs, or so, a bunch of my favorites, not all of them, because not all of them exist on Nintendo, but a bunch of my favorite IPs to me have their best entries on Nintendo Switch. Like Mario Wonder may or may not, in the end, end up being my favorite side-scrolling Mario game, but it's one of my favorites. Mario Odyssey is my favorite Mario game. I think <laughs> the last Mario Party game, not that first one, but the last one is actually my favorite Mario Party game. Uh, but that's just sticking with Mario. And Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with all those bonus tracks, you know, the 48 extra tracks on Switch is just epic and awesome. But even Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Xenoblade Chronicles, you just pick it, two or three. Either one I happen to like more than Xenoblade Chronicles 1, although I could argue I might like X more. Really wish that came over, but whatever. Uh, you know, you have... Animal Crossing New Horizons being my favorite Animal Crossing since the original GameCube one. The terraforming just really did it for me. That feature alone was huge for me with Animal Crossing. But more than that, there's just a lot happening this generation beyond the games that make this my favorite generation of Nintendo. You see, before Nintendo Switch, the only interactions I really had uh, when it came to Nintendo stuff was Zelda. Right, we I ran Zelda fan websites, interacted with a lot of Zelda fans, made a lot of Zelda theories, covered a lot of other people's Zelda theories, and that was a truly special time in my life. I, I was doing that from 1998 all the way um, through 2006 on my own websites. So then I became editor in chief of a place called Zelda Informer and did that all the way until the end of April of 2017. And this generation um, is the first time I got to enjoy Nintendo games with like-minded or at least reasonable, mostly reasonable communities. And what do I mean? The community we built here on YouTube. Um, this is the first generation where I got to talk about more than Zelda and actually have people be excited. People be excited for Kirby. People be excited for Metroid and Mario. And even some of the smaller games like ARMS. There was a lot of hype around ARMS back in 2017. It's been, uh, it's created something for me that I never had. 
because uh, I always grew up as a Nintendo guy, but beyond my best friend, Eric, there was nobody in real life that I really got to talk shop and got to talk Nintendo with. Everyone was always a PC gamer or a PlayStation or an Xbox. So as I got older and now my friends list, you know, my real life friends list is even smaller. I really don't have people to talk about Nintendo with until I started doing YouTube. And through YouTube over the last six years, um, now in our seventh year, it's really been special to me to build this community of all of you guys that are just as passionate about, yes, Zelda, but also other games, you know, as I am, like Joycey J, one of our moderators, is always hyping up Zelda, always hyping up Zelda. You guys know that she's also a massive Bayonetta fan, and getting to talk shop and talk Bayonetta with another Bayonetta fan is just awesome to me. And this has been true of so many of Nintendo's IPs that you guys helped me make this my favorite generation because it's the first one I got to enjoy this with other people talking and hyping alongside me and this is a unique experience for me because I didn't grow up with the internet and let me explain we had the internet but we didn't have the internet as it is today where you're following content creators where you're watching live streams how you couldn't even barely stream videos when I was a kid because the internet connections were 56k modems like they were very slow so this to me became a special generation because it's the first one I really enjoyed it with other Nintendo fans and that, to me, ended up making this even more, like, more impactful. Like, Nintendo's always impacted my life in different ways, and Zelda games in different ways, and other games as well. But this is the first time I could say the community impacted me as much as the games. Um, and that gets to my last point here, that I really, really, really love what I do for a living. Um... I think all of us have this dream in the back of our minds, uh, maybe not even in the back, maybe we're always striving for it, to work really hard at something. And ultimately, whether it's a hobby, whether it's you know college or whatever we're doing, just work really hard so we can do the thing that we love the most for a living. And that is, that is something that very few of us get to obtain for any point of our life, whether it's just for a year of our life or whether it's for the rest of our lives. Very few of us will ever truly get to do the thing we're passionate about for a living, as in making the money you need to survive, um, and get to do that forever. And I don't know if I'll get to do this forever, but over the last year and a half, um, and really over the last six years building up to that, um, I'm now a full-time YouTuber. And I never imagined when I began doing YouTube a bit more seriously after uh, getting Zelda Informer taken away from me. Long story on that one. But after losing Zelda Informer, I didn't know YouTube was what I was going to do. I was working other jobs, right? I worked in water care, helping people install like, you know, salt water softeners and neutralizers and stuff. Um, I worked at places like McDonald's and uh, Walmart. I ended up uh, getting some IT gigs as well and working in IT for a while. And I did some roofing jobs. I was kind of all over the place. And all of this was because I've had children um, since my uh, stepdaughter became, in my opinion, I don't, I don't think stepdaughter is appropriate. I've been raising her since nine months. So she's just my daughter. And I love her just as much as my, uh, my boys that have my blood in them. And I, I just... Never imagined when I was starting YouTube on the side just to give me an avenue to put my opinions and, and my thoughts out there about Nintendo that it would ever develop into something that I would do for a living. I think in the back of my mind, once we crossed like 50,000 subscribers or whatever um, a few years ago that I had thought, you know, we are making a little money here. It would be cool if we could continue to do that. But uh, it was never something that I was thinking of, man, this is, this is going to end up being enough to support a family of five. And over the last year and a half, that has been the case. So what I wanted to say, and what I truly want you guys to know, is how sincerely thankful I am for this past year and a half and even beyond that. Because you guys have not just made this Nintendo Direct special to me coming up, this supposed final Direct for Nintendo Switch. You have made my life feel more complete. You have made me a better man. You have helped me become a better father. I don't think people truly understand how uplifting of a human you become once you no longer hate waking up every day, right? We all know that feeling. You don't want to get up and go do your schoolwork. You don't want to get up and deal with the test you got coming. You don't want to get up and go to work and slave away just to get a paycheck that vanishes the moment you get it just so you could survive. You don't want to do that stuff. You hate waking up every day. And most days, not every day, but most days, this is still a job. There's still stuff that 
isn't so fun about it, but most days I look forward to waking up. I look forward to making videos and I look forward to doing those live streams and interacting with all of you. And I just want to tell you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for enabling me to become a full-time YouTuber, enabling me to spend more time with my kids, no longer working 60, 70 hours at some other job just to put food on the table. Now I'm at home and I get to be with my kids. I'll give you an example. This video right now is being recorded with me being able to take my kids over to my parents' house so they can swim in their swimming pool. Yeah, my parents, congrats, congrats to them for being pretty well off, but they worked hard for it. They don't give me a dime and they're gone this weekend. And I dragged my entire computer and this microphone to here so I could make this video for you guys. And it's because I could have took the day off, but I don't want to. It's the first day of June. It's time to get to work. The calendar is turned. And here we are. So thank you for being here. I am Nathaniel Rumpeljans from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.